Okay, okay, today we are looking at what's called or what's known as Pascal's Triangle. And so it's named after a mathematician, French, I think, if my memory is correctly, Blaise Pascal, 17th century mathematician. Uh, Chinese and Indian mathematicians um, knew about the triangle much earlier on. Um, and there's uh, different names for it in different in different cultures, but we know it as Pascal's triangle. And the thing about Pascal's triangle is that it says here each element is the sum of the two diagonally above it. So if you want to start constructing it, the first row, which is called row zero, um, which um, will um, I'm obvious in a minute why it's called row zero when I go further down. Um, the next row down, the first row is again ones. So this pattern that I took mentioned up here doesn't actually start until row two. So all the outside ones are all ones. So to get this one in the middle here, what we do is go diagonally above it, one and a one, and we add them together and we get two. So the next row down here, one, and then to get here, we go diagonally above it, one and a two, we add them together, we get three. We add them together, we get three, and then a one outside. So one here, one, one plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four, and then a one. So you'll notice there's some symmetry down the middle. And so on, as it says there, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, it turns out, and the reason why we're doing it, there's a whole host of different patterns that are, appear in Pascal's triangle number patterns. All right, so if you want to know about those those host of different patterns in um, Pascal's triangle, there's heaps of stuff on YouTube that you can look up and you can you know, find all sorts of nerdy mathematician cool stuff. But the one we are interested in is the relationship between these numbers and combinations. And so they're related to combinations in the following way. So the zeroth row is if you've got no things and you're choosing none. There's only one way you can do that, and that's to do nothing. And to do nothing is something. So like in row one, You've got one thing and you're choosing none. Again, you're doing something, you're doing nothing. Or you can choose the one. Again, you're doing something, so you're choosing the one. The second row, all right, so the row numbers are how many objects you've got. And then starting here, choosing, so third row, we've got three objects and we're choosing none. And we're choosing one, choosing two, choosing three, on the way across. So for small values of n, it's, we can do NCR. So if we're on a, a uh, exam, uh, non-calculator exam, and we needed to know these things, we can pretty quickly figure out the first few rows, right? Like I did up here. So for small values of n, you know, if you've got n that's you know, 40 or 50 or something, then it's going to take too long. All right. So NCR, this NCR, is used for a few different things. So I'll just touch. We're not doing these particular things now, but I'll just touch on them because, uh, well, certainly do some. We'll do, certainly the binomial probability distribution, NCR is used to get the coefficients in that and binomial expansion. So I'm not sure whether the binomial expansion is just say if you've got x plus a to the power of n, um, there's a theorem called the binomial expansion theorem that allows you to write out what that expansion would be um, without having to actually do all those multiplications. And so this NCR is used to get the coefficients of, it, of the terms. All right, um, and as it turns out, 
relating to this binomial probability distribution, the, the 2020 maths methods exam one, that paper, which is the non-calculator one, there was a binomial probability distribution question. And if you knew how to create that and the relationship between that and this combination bit, because the combinations is part of the binomial probability uh, distribution formula, um, that would have been extremely beneficial for you if you had known that. All right, there's a whole bunch of waffle on all of that, but what we are interested in is is the is the following: the, that there's a relationship between NCR, the row number, and the element in the thing. So if we go back to the first four rows, uh, sorry, first four rows, it will just isolate rows three and four, for example. So these are enough. Combine these two, right? So what I've done is I've combined these numbers in rows three and four with the combination way of writing. So row three, three objects, how many are choosing none? How many ways is there to do that one? Three objects, choose one, how many different ways is there to do that three? So then this one down here, one plus three is four. Now, what you notice though, is that this one here, 4C1, it's 3C0 plus 3C1. And then if we go at this one here, it's 3C1 plus 3C2. So you notice that there's a pattern that presents itself. So the number up the top here is one less, and the number that's down here is your R and R minus 1. All right, so if N is 4, this is N minus 1. If R is 1, this is R minus 1, and that's R. So here's the pattern NCR is N minus 1 CR minus 1 plus N minus 1 CR. And sometimes this is referred to as Pascal's rule. All right, so hopefully I haven't confused anyone there with all that stuff. If I have, just um, make sure you get some assistance. So again, a multiple choice, uh, multiple choice, a non-calculator type of exam, for example, you might be asked, you might be asked this thing. 17C2 is 136 and 17C3 is 680. Evaluate 18C3. So what we just looked at, 18C3, one less, 17, C, one less, is that. And now we've been given these ones, 136 and 680. And then when we add those together, you get uh, 816. All right. Okay, this next question, in my mind, is a little bit of a weird question, but anyway, we will go through it because I've asked a couple of times in the book. It says, write down the n equals 6 row of Pascal's triangle and state the value of C, 6, C, 3. So from earlier, our um, row 4 is this one. So that's when n equals 4, n equals 5. Start with 1 outside, plus 10, 10, 5, and a 1. n equals 6, start with 1 outside, add those two together, add those two together. All right, the diagonal 1 up, add those two together. And remember, of course, this symmetrical. All right, so there's our n equals 6 row. State the value of 6C3. So remember, this one, the first one is the way that we're choosing none. All right, so that's 6C none. 
6C1, 6C2 and 6C3. So it's actually the fourth element because we're choosing, there's, there's four options. Choose none, choose one, choose two, choose three and that's the one we're after. So 6C3 is 20. All right, so the next bit that we're looking at here in Pascal's triangle is subsets of a set. So here we go. So suppose your friend says they've got five books to give away and you can take any you want. How many possible selections? So you can take any you want. You don't have to take any if you don't want. You can take all five of them. You can take three of them. All right. So they will, will be what we would refer to as, as the subsets of the set. So we've got five things. It's the whole set. How many you take would be a subset. You take one. That's a subset of five and so on. All right. So that's what we're up to. So how, may, how, how can we do it? All right. There's two, there's two, two, two approaches. So the first approach is you take none or one or two or three or four or five books. And so that's 5C0. Remember, or I mentioned before, relates to addition, or you choosing one, or you from the five you're choosing all two of those five, or you're choosing three of those five, or you're choosing four of those five, or you're choosing all five. All right, so then we'll go, okay, well, that's one plus five plus 10, plus 10, plus 5, plus 1. How do I know that? Because I've prepared one earlier. So you could do that on, well, on your calculator. And then when you add all of that up, that is 32. Now also, don't forget, we're going back up to our triangle, row 5, that I've produced here. It's, what I've done is just adding all of those here together. All right, those there, it's just the sum of row five. All right, so this is the sum of row five. Elements. Okay, so there you go. So there's one way that you can do it. Um, the second way that you can do it is like this. You can say, all right, for each book, you can do one of th two things. You can either take or leave. So there's two options. So if I create some boxes and because there's five books I've created five boxes and so with this book here I can either take it or I can leave it so I've got two options for this second book I can either take it or leave it third same thing take it or leave it fourth take it or leave it and the last book I can either take it or leave it and so, of course, we have there, what we would have is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 uh, times 2, which is 2 to the 5, which is 32, which is mm, the same as what we got in part 1. Handy that, that's the same. So two different approaches. So if we consider... Um, 
the different selections are subsets of the whole, we can say that a set size n has two to the n subsets. All right. So two to the n subsets, including the empty set and the set itself, which means if you don't take any or you take all of them. All right, and oh, it was a thing that I had that I had didn't put in there, had in my notes that I didn't put in here. Well, there you go. That's uh, quite interesting. So what I had in my notes was this that. NC0 plus NC1 plus all the way up to NCN is equal to 2 to the N. <clears throat> is what I had in my notes. All right, so some of the numbers on row N of Pascal's triangle is to the N, which of course is the subsets. All right, so example here. A friend has six books and says you can take any number. How many are possible if you take at least one book? So here we've got a restriction. So we take at least one. So first of all, it's six books, so n equals six for a start. So what do we got? So we want to take greater than or equal to one. So the way I'm going to look at that is because I'm going to add if I take one, if I take two, if I take, I've got to work all those out and add them up. So what I can do is I can say, well, let's take all minus when I take none. Take no books. Because all of them, remember, is the sum of that row, row six, and the sum of row six, because n equals six, is two to the six. Minus, of course, that first one when we don't take any. All right, if I shoot back up here to row six up here. All right, so all of them is when we add all of that up. But we don't want that one. So we're wanting these ones. So add all of those, take that one away. So often, you know, I've used that strategy a couple of times, and often that's a good way of of looking at things, if, you know, you want greater than or equal just about everything. It's often less work if you do all minus. All right, so 2 to the 6 is 64. Take 1, there's 63 uh, different possible selections that you can take. All right, last example. So how many subsets of the numbers 1, 2, all the way to 10 have at least two elements? All right, so n equals 10. So we're looking at greater than or equal to two elements. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, well, that's the same as all minus known minus one. All right, so all of them, because n is two, is two to the n, remember we're adding to the end to the 10 remember we're adding that tenth row all together and so none is if you've got 10 and you don't choose any one is if you've got 10 and you're choosing one all right two to the 10 is a thousand and twenty four and uh, there's one way you can do that and ten ways you can do that so when you take all of that away <coughs> excuse me you get 1,013 different subsets of those 10 numbers, which have got at least two numbers, two of those 10 in it. So you could have, so how many groups of two numbers could you get from those 10? How many groups of three? And so on, add all them together. Just total 1,013 different groups of numbers or sets of numbers, subsets of numbers um, of all of those um, particular ones. All right, so have a go at the 
practice questions on those things. Um, and if you need assistance, make sure you reach out and get it. And as always, have fun.